Our natural immunity can be supported, if not enhanced greatly, by following a few simple, really simple measures. And these things are inexpensive and common sense things that we've always been told. Uh, nothing groundbreaking, but it still nonetheless makes sense when we hear it again and again. It really drives the point home. And that's what I try to do with you guys today. Uh, the word immunity comes from immunus, which is a Latin word, which means literally free. It has secondary meanings such as untouched or unblemished, unimpaired and intact. And literally what our immune system does for us is if it's healthy and it's optimized, it keeps us free from harmful outside influences, whether they're microbes or stress, things that can alter our homeostasis. So we need to keep our immunity strong, especially uh, while there is a pandemic. So I'll be focusing on four things, adequate sleep, adequate nutrition, maintaining a routine and exercise. So the first thing is sleep. Make sure you get a good night's rest because when you don't get enough sleep, you're actually putting your immunity at risk. And there are so many things that happen during sleep. Adequate sleep is required to give the body rest uh, to reset it and to repair it. We have a lot of things going on. On the outside, it looks like a lazy activity. The person's just motionless, but a lot of internal processes are happening. Ner the nervous system is, system is repairing itself. The cells, the neurons are cleaning up any repair, uh, any damage, I'm sorry, within the, the DNA. So that's happening at, the, at a cellular level. There is uh, uh, the repair of DNA damage that accumulates during the daytime. And many chemicals such as cytokines and inflammatory markers and cortisol, melatonin, and various hormones, they're impacted by sleep or the lack thereof. Now in Ayurvedic medicine, which is something I, I incorporate into my practice, we like to tell patients to go to bed around 10 o'clock and wake up ideally by six. That gives you a good eight hours of sleep. Some people require less sleep, some people require more. Um, a lot of times my patients will say, well, I'm a night owl. I don't get anything done during the daytime. I get all my work done at 2 a.m., that's the time. And to them I say, well, I think you've ad adapted over the years. I mean, I'm a former, former night owl myself. It's quiet, you get a lot of thinking done, there's a lot of clarity at that time, seemingly, but you're depriving your body of that pair time. So turn the screens off by 8.30, 9 o'clock, and so that you're in bed by, by 10, hopefully asleep by 10.30. A lot of patients work the night shift. So again, for them, it's a whole different story, but I try to tell patients to find routine, seek routine in whatever situation you're in. That is what your body craves. It craves a routine. The next topic I want to talk about is exercise. I'm adamant about taking that, that quick even if it's five minutes, it's better than nothing. So if you do that every day, it becomes a habit. And then it, you miss it if you don't, if you miss a day. And it makes you think, oh, I missed my walk, even if it was five minutes. Um, if you're sheltering in place at home, you know, you can garden. That's also exercise, weed, pull weeds, walk the dog, kick around a ball outside as long as you're not congregating in a big group. One of my physician friends uh, humorously um, put up a post on Facebook that she had dug out her um, old Jane Fonda <laughs> workout videos and she was working out to them in the living room on the days that she wasn't going in to see patients. So whatever you want to do, do it, but make it fun and, and make it consistent. That's the key. The third point I want to say is follow a routine. And I've sort of been talking about that longitudinally throughout this talk, but um, try to stick to a pattern as much as possible try not to let it fall apart. And I tell my patients that, you know, none of us are perfect, um, your doctor included. So I try to aim for the best I can. If I can get 70 to 80% um, compliance with my diet or my sleep, I consider myself lucky. So I tell that to my patients. It just takes that stress away from them because the last thing I want is to be managing stress with my patients, but adding more to their plate <laughs> to the, make them feel guilty that they're not adequately managing their stress. The next uh, topic I wanna discuss with you is food and nutrition, and that includes hydration. So always um, eat on time, uh, make your meals on time. And again, if you're uh, working at the hospital or in the clinics, um, 
make sure that that meal time as much as possible i know it's not always possible but as much as you can try to keep that midday routine make it an anchor if if everything else in your routine falls apart make lunch your maybe an anchor for yourself um, where something is consistent hydration can be in the forms of soups and broths and stew if water is just boring for you you can have tea as well there's a lot of ways to get hydration obviously we all know that lots of fruits and vegetables as much as possible eat the whole color spectrum there are more specific things that i'd like to get into at some point maybe in a future webinar uh, with my patients i like to examine things in more detail such as specific breathing exercises um, specific yoga poses um, diet specific things you can eat short courses of herbal therapies that, that are available to everyone very easily and it could be something that's in your kitchen you don't you know, we're trying to not go out and shop as much as possible. We're trying to shelter in place as much as possible. So hopefully at some point, I'd like to talk about things that we can do with the ingredients we have in our own kitchen. These are natural immunity boosters and can be used as medicines to help us fight off uh, the damage that stress causes. So we'll, we'll do that at some point. But if you have any questions, please do uh, let me know. Reach out to me. Thank you.